Okay, let me share my screen. But, but. So uh, let me know if, can it, do you guys still hear me? Can someone say yes, I can hear you still? Yes, we hear you still. Awesome, awesome. Okay, I never know like when I like share a screen sometimes it actually it's mute. Anyways, what I wanna do now is just kinda like uh, talk to you guys about the first project we're gonna be doing and that's to, uh, to paint the color wheel. So um, uh, real quick, if you go to the Canvas page and then every week I'll be throwing like an announcements what's going on for the week. So if you click on here uh, for this week, so we'll be working on this from, to, uh, well, all this week uh, through Wednesday. And then after Wednesday, we'll start the next project. So kind of like the, the, my plan here is kind of like talk about how to do it, to kind of go through like what the project is. Then you have like the rest of the week. Then when we meet up on uh, next uh, Tuesday, um, I want to play like a Kahoot game, just a quick review game of like, you know, kind of things we, we've, we've done. I typically like in my classroom, I like, usually have like a bag of like Tootsie Rolls or like, you know, uh, maybe some Starburst, something like that. And like, if you're the top five people I throw candy to, um, but you know, if, uh, if um, so, but if you win and we're, since we're not at school, probably not gonna go to school until the 22nd of February, if everything works out great. Um, then uh, uh, if you win, just, Remind me when I see you in person and I'll hook you up then. Anyways, uh, so from February 1st to the 10th, so you have a wide a ways to, to a little bit of time to work, work on the color wheel. So if you like watch all the videos today, maybe kind of draw the color wheel and don't start painting until next time we meet, that's fine. Um, you got you got some time for this. So you don't need to rush through it. I'd rather have you take your time through the color wheel and make sure the color is all right than, than rush through it anyways. So um, that's on our announcements. Uh, um, so then what I mean, my plan is, is, uh, then you click on modules and, uh, I plan on making YouTube videos because I think YouTube videos work great, especially if someone misses a Google meet. And the other thing is, uh, when I do record stuff over, um, uh, over Google meet or show you a video over Google meet, uh, sometimes the resolution isn't the best. Uh, so I'll, I'm, all my projects and demonstrations I plan on making YouTube videos for. Uh, then you can watch the YouTube videos and you can stop and fast forward, rewind. Um, so that's kind of the plan. So um, if you click on the, the first module we've got here, uh, uh, the color wheel, what you'll see then is a Google slide presentation. And uh, on the Google slide presentation, they'll have the videos embedded into it in the YouTube videos and everything else. So um, uh, that's where it's going to be. Then um, all you're going to do is you're just going to take a picture of your color wheel when you're done with it and submit it on Canvas, and then that's how you'll get graded. So just kind of a little bit of like how you're going to find different things. Pretty sure it's very similar in most of your classes, but uh, I just figured I'd go through it because it's the, the first project we're actually working on. So uh, when you click on, um, here, I'll open up this here. When you click on the module, uh, it will open up uh, this uh, Google slide. Um, and uh, where everything's set. So this is this is the Google slide you guys are gonna see. So for the project, it's painting a color wheel. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be making a color wheel uh, and you're gonna be mixing the colors for the color wheel, um, but you're also going to be adding five different uh, shades of value. And uh, what we talk about when we say value in art, it's like a little bit different than math, but when you say like value, um, that means how light or dark a color is. And usually they say when they darken a color, they call it shading. Uh, and when they lighten a color, they call it tint. But usually value how light or dark a color is. A lot of times people just use shading um, just in general for changing color. But value is the right term. Value is how light or dark a color is. Shading is your darkening in color. So for your learning targets are you can paint the color wheel. And then the second learning target is that you can um, change the value of a color, which is by like darkening or lighting it. And uh, by, since you guys are mostly using watercolor, uh, to lighten a color, you're just adding a little bit more water to it. And since watercolor, like transparent paint pigments that you use water to lighten, um, the make more transparent. So you're just gonna lighten it uh, by using more water. And then to darken the color, 
you're going to use the opposite color on the color wheel, which is called your complementary color. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And then the last thing is you can define words like primary color, secondary color, and uh, tertiary color, um, which I'll talk about here in a little bit as well. So um, that's the first thing. Now, um, we're going to start out here. I got four different videos. Uh, the first video, um, it kind of talks about what color is, kind of goes uh, through how people use color in art. Uh, and then I'll talk about what primary colors are, secondary colors, tertiary colors. I'll talk about like monographic, um, uh, monochromatic uh, color schemes uh, and things like that. Now I plan on taking, like if you watch like this video and the next video, um, that's where I'm gonna get all the, the answers for the Kahoot game. So if you watch these two videos, you'll, you'll get all the answers, right? Anyways, this first video, it's about uh, um, four and a half minutes, uh, just under five minutes. So um, I'll watch this video, I think you'll like it. I'm not gonna play it uh, during the Google Meet because again, the reception's not that great. So when we're done talking, just uh, start up a, uh, playing this video uh, and watching this video real quick. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yep. I'll let you guys watch the video. All right. Now the, the second video, um, it's about uh, color symbolism. It's like, uh, it has to do with the psychology of color and how colors make you feel certain ways. Um, this video is uh, just under six minutes. Um, so then watch this video and uh, it'll kind of go through like each color and then like uh, how colors make you feel. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not going to play this video, uh, but I want you to watch those two videos because um, you'll see a better resolution will come in better if you guys just click on it uh, in the Google slide. All right, so what I, next thing I want to talk about is the psychology of colors. Now, you'll see this a lot in the second video, but I just kind of want to review it for a little bit for you guys. Now, the psychology of colors, uh, it's a real thing. Colors make you feel different ways. And uh, so when I first like heard about this, I thought, ah, it's just a bunch of mumble jumbo. This isn't real. How can a color make you feel a certain way? Um, I didn't really like believe it till I kind of saw the science behind it. So what happened in uh, uh, like the 1910s, 1920s, is they did a lot of different research on the psychology of color and, uh, and different studies. And there's truth to it. Um, it. It actually works. Like if you look at humans in general, um, and you show them certain colors, certain like physical reactions happen and, uh, and you feel certain ways uh, because of colors. And I don't know if this is because like, uh, you know, tens of thousands of years ago as uh, we were all evolving um, over time, uh, maybe people saw a fire or, or red and they think of blood and then their heart rate went up and uh, people that didn't like, I don't know, got eaten or something. I, I don't know how it, like, it, it happened like this, but this is this works generally for everybody. So there's a psychology of color um, kind of uh, between different colors. So I'm going to kind of briefly talk about what different colors kind of do and how that kind of makes you feel. So the first color is like red. And uh, so they've shown like people red and they like look at their blood pressure. And this is, it's very minor, like it's very minor, but um, people's heart rate tends to go up very slightly when they see the color red. Um, and because uh, red kind of makes you excited and your blood pressure go up, well, a lot of times we like uh, put that with emotions um, that would make you kind of excited. So when you see red, um, they typically like put that with, uh, um, with energy. So you think of like war, rage, anger, but then you also think of like passion and love, things that make you excited, um, desire. So like, you know, you, you think of uh, uh, like when people like link red with that, that's why you'll see coming up in a couple of weeks, you'll see Valentine's Day. And like, you know, if you got a crush on somebody or my wife I love, I'll give her a red uh, heart with like chocolate in it. And like, why is it red? Because of what it does to people's blood pressure and how it like, you know, makes you excited. So I'm going to skip orange. I'm going to come back to orange. I'm going to hit up a yellow now. Yellow is kind of the color of sunshine. It usually makes people think, be joyful, happy. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of energy to it. Uh, so it's a very happy color. And that's why, like a lot of kids, you know, you might have like a, a yellow pacifier. You have different things of yellow and makes people happy, like a yellow rattle or whatnot. But, but in the 1920s, what they did is they found out that, yeah, yellow makes people happy. So because it makes people happy, they figured we, uh, they did a couple studies and they painted a bunch of like nurseries yellow 
Um, so when kids would be in the nursery, it figured they'd make them happy. And uh, they found out the opposite happened. Because everything was yellow, it made them feel uncomfortable and like black kids were crying. Uh, so they stopped painting, like give daycares and nurseries like yellow. Um, so like yellow makes people happy, but in moderation. So that's kind of strange. So like a little bit of yellow, you think that's sunshine, that's great. But if you look up in the sky and the sky was all yellow instead of just like the sun, uh, it would be creepy. And that's uh, tends to make creepy people out when you use lots and lots of yellow. So yellow in moderation makes people happy. Then orange, orange is uh, kind of the combination of like red and yellow. Um, where it makes people happy, but still they got the heart rate up. So it's kind of like a nice, good in-between color. People usually think of like, you know, sunshine, tropics, and joy. So it has a little bit of both. Um, and it's like not an easy if you have lots of orange compared to yellow. Um, but it's not quite as like happy as yellow. And uh, it's like, you know, red, but it's not uh, as intensive as red. So those colors that red, orange, and yellow, those are called warm colors. When people see them, they kind of feel like a little more warm. Um, and uh, so that's why, like, if you talk about warm colors, you're talking about those three colors. Now, the next couple color colors, colors I'm going to talk about are called cool colors. And usually when you think of those, like, you think of, like, cool or calming. Uh, it's quite a bit different than the, the warm colors. So the first color I'm going to, like, uh, talk about is green. Um, so people say green, and usually you think of, like, you know, nature, um, harmony, freshness, or whatnot. So uh, that's the color green. So green, you know, look at the forest and things growing and everything like that. Uh, so it's good, but yet at the same time, it, 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 it's people look at green as green as growing, but it could also be green growing the wrong way. So sometimes we'll see uh, green as like a, in a, like a sickness, um, like, you know, green growing into madness as much as it is growing into healthiness. So it's a, it's a growing, but it could be growing either way. It doesn't need to be growing. Uh, in a good way, it could be growing in a bad way too. And a lot of times, so if you think of like Vincent van Gogh, that self-portrait where he cut his ear off, um, he's kind of going mad or whatever. That's a lot of green in the background. It's a very green painting. So that's, that's uh, uh, green. Um, then uh, you go to blue. Blue is a very uh, relaxing, chill color. Um, you, you think of like a depth, a stability. Um, sometimes uh, with blue, it comes like with confidence, wisdom, loyalty, but a very chill color, uh, they think about like truth that uh, blue relaxes people uh, the most um, out of uh, the different colors. So it's a very uh, relaxing in depth color. People think of the sky and the sea, which like, you know, go on for a long time, very stable. Now, uh, purple, purple kind of relaxes you like blue, but uh, purple is a little bit different. And this is kind of has to do with like the history of, uh, of things. So um, I guess like when people think of purple, they think of royalty power like you know if you have like an emperor be wearing uh, purple or nobility think of like luxury like like really luxurious things or ambition and this has to go back to like you know thousands of years ago um you know actually even back a couple hundred years ago purple was the hardest color to make like you could go out into the wild and you could find different flowers and minerals and you can mix up you know reds and yellows and blues but like uh, it, like things in nature um, aren't as abundant. It's like hard to make the color purple. Um, so when they would make the color purple because it's so much more difficult, it means that you're like really well off to be able to like afford purple or to get something purple. So you think of like you know back in uh, like with Alexander the Great, uh, he wore a big purple robe. Think of like Julius Caesar. Uh, before he got uh, murdered in the Senate he stitched purple uh, onto his toga and people think, wow, he's gonna become a king. Uh, so uh, let's get rid of him. You know, so purple, like it's like, it's, it's luxury. It, it, if you look at it, it calms you down, like the psychology kind of like, um, you know, like similar to blue, uh, but uh, it, historically it means luxury. And so a lot of people think of purple over the ages, luxury. Now black and white really aren't a color, um, but uh, it still kind of makes people feel certain ways. And uh, so uh, when people see like white, they think of, first of all, you think like light, whereas uh, things are like, like lighter, like, uh, you know, not dark like the night. But, you know, so it usually goes with innocence, purity, um, cleanliness. My wife likes like, you know, since like uh, a, a white kitchen or whatever, I can't stand it because that just means I like, see food stains everywhere. I have to clean it, clean it much more harder to clean. But anyways, uh, there's a uh, white. Whereas black, you think of more like uh, elegance and formal. Formil 
formality. Um, I think of like mystery, uh, power. Um, you know, there's a reason why the guy in Monopoly is wearing a black suit. Uh, usually, you know, a lot of times it goes with black, comes and goes with like wealth. You know, it could also mean like a death as well. Um, so those are like kind of like the different colors and like how the colors kind of make you feel. I just wanted to, you know, briefly kind of talk about that. I'll throw a couple of these questions like in the, the hoop game. Um, but uh, colors make you feel a certain way and uh, it's real. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about then is uh, uh, how colors kind of work. Um, so here's the visible spectrum and like us as humans um, can see the visual spectrum and set the colors of the rainbow we have red on one side and you have violet on the other side. Now it's, it's strange how things work with like, for instance, red, red um, has the longest wavelength and the shortest frequency. Whereas violet on the opposite side has the shortest wavelength and uh, the, uh, um, the longest frequency or the, the quickest frequency. Uh, so it kind of works like if you were to like look at like say two cars like driving by and one car happened to be like a, um, a violet and the other car happened to be a red. Um, and uh, they've done different studies with this too. And like uh, police will see two cars driving by and they're both going the same speed. It'll look like the red car is going slightly faster because of the way that light travels uh, and it uh, travels quickly, quicker to our eyes versus the violet color. Uh, it's very subtle. Um, but uh, in the other so the car is going faster, but then they look at the radar gun and they're going the same speed. So if you're like looking at buying a, a new car or whatever, uh, and you don't want to get a speeding ticket, yeah, maybe not get the red car. Again, this is very subtle, or just go the speed limit. Um, what's also kind of interesting is, uh, so I'm a scuba diver. I, I love to scuba dive. And uh, um, I have a red uh, wetsuit. And uh, so once I get about uh, 40 feet, uh, deep uh, in the ocean, the red starts turning darker brown, and then it starts turning like a gray, and it, it, you don't see the red anymore. Then I have like uh, some orange on my dive computer, and once I get about 50 feet, you stop seeing the orange, and that kind of turns into like a, a grayish color too, uh, and then so on. So it's like as you like work your way down the spectrum, um, the way that like light reflects off the water, you stop seeing these vibrant colors on the left of the spectrum, and you only see the colors on the right of the spectrum. That's why when you see like you know, different pictures of like, you know, underneath the water, things look a lot more bluer. Uh, you have like dull colors of fish, you know, fish that are up by like uh, the, uh, towards the surface, you know, they're all colorful and whatnot, but um, it definitely like the deeper you go, the duller everything gets. Um, so that's just a, a, a little bit about kind of the color spectrum. Now, when we see color, um, what happens is uh, we got like color travels through like wavelength and it like uh, hits the retina of our eye and inside our eye um, we have like three different cones. We have a blue cone, a green cone, a red cone and so if we see like the example we see something red uh, it'll go through the cone and like oh this is red. Um, if we see something uh, say purple it'll hit the, the part of the frequency will touch the, the blue cone and the red cone and they'll kind of like mix or whatever kind of like a color wheel in our own eye. And like, oh, this is purple. And that's how like things kind of go through our eyes. So these are the colors we can see. And, uh, um, and we can see them like through the different cones like in our eye. Now, um, uh, humans, this is what we can see, but I just want to let you know that there's a ton of colors out there that we cannot see. So for instance, we got like three different cones in our eyes. Uh, bumblebees, for instance, they have four cones in their eyes. They see uh, what we see plus uh, they have um, ultraviolet light, so or colors that they can see. So they can see ultraviolet, which we can't see. And then if you get uh, like really crazy, there's um, the, uh, what's called the, uh, I forgot, it's a shrimp, uh, the mantis shrimp. And the mantis shrimp has 12 cones in its eyes. So it's seen all sorts of colors that, that humans can't see at all. So um, uh, yeah, it's just it's crazy. But anyways, these are the colors we can see because of the colors of our eyes. I just want you to know there's Lots of colors out in the world, uh, in the universe that we can't see um, just because of, uh, you know, how ours are. Mr. DeCrane, and he has a question. Oh, yeah, shoot. Why don't we have a yellow cone inside instead of a green one? You know, that is a great question, and I have no idea. <laughs> so, um, so what it is is, like, it's actually, like, skewed. 
So like instead of being like a red, uh, a green, like a blue, it's like everything moved to the left on the color wheel. So the red's more like a magenta, the blue's more of like a cyan, and the green is more like of a yellowish green. So it's just the color wheel just moved to the left, if that makes sense. That answer your question, Anna? Okay. Um, so, cool. Well, anyways, that's uh, enough about that part. Let me talk about what we're actually doing here for the color wheel. So, um, first thing is, uh, this is the color wheel we're going to make. Now, um, if you're going to draw it, uh, the easiest way to draw it is to just draw five circles. So you start with a little circle, then a bigger circle, then a bigger circle, then a bigger circle, then a bigger circle. And then you just draw lines like you would be, like, say, if you're cutting a pizza, slicing up a pizza, and then that would get you your color color wheel. Um, I'm not great, you know, how well you can draw a circle. So if you draw an oval or your circles don't look great, that's, that's not a big deal. Like, it doesn't matter. Your circle does not need to look nice. But I do know that there are some of you guys out there that have uh, that are circle um, perfection freaks that just want to have the perfect circle. And if you want to have the perfect circle, uh, the easiest way to do it would be just to take your watercolor paper, put it up to the screen of your laptop um, or the monitor, whatever you're using, and just like, lightly trace it. Or you can print it out, and you can just put it by like a window and then put your watercolor paper on top of that, and you can trace it that way. So if you want to trace it, feel free to trace it. Um, if we were in class, I got like usually have some compasses to draw perfect circles, um, and you could do that if you want. But again, you do not need to draw a perfect circle at all. It's you're not getting graded on drawing a perfect circle. So, the color wheel. Uh, what you're gonna we're gonna do is you got your primary colors. So you have your red, your blue, and your yellow. And they're called primary colors because these are the colors you can't. You have to start with, you can't mix a red, you can't mix a blue, you can't mix a yellow, but you can use those three colors to mix all the other colors on the color wheel. So primary colors are the colors you can't mix, the colors you start out with. Secondary colors are colors that you can mix with your primary colors. So I have a red and a blue, and if I go halfway in between them, I get a purple or a violet, and that's called a secondary color. I have a blue and I have a yellow, and if you go halfway between them, you get a green, and then that's called the secondary color because it's the um, in between the two. And I have a yellow and a red. And if you go halfway between them, you get an orange. So that's secondary color. So secondary colors are colors that you take two primary colors you mix together. And then the, the next one you got is tertiary colors. And tertiary colors um, are colors that you mix a secondary color and a primary color to get. So um, violet, which is a secondary color, and mix that with red, you get a reddish violet. Violet, which is a secondary color, you mix it with a primary color, which is blue, you get a bluish violet. And you kind of go down blue, uh, which is a primary color, you mix it with green, which is a secondary color, you get a bluish green, and you got, you know, your yellow green, your yellow orange, uh, your red orange, and those are your, your secondary color, uh, or your tertiary colors. So these are the colors you're going to mix. Um, and uh, uh, here, I'll talk about the next part here in a second. So... Um, I got this video, and uh, I want you to, uh, to to watch the video, and it's like um, how I got started and how how you paint and grabbing your or your pellet. It's uh, 13 minutes uh, long, um, but uh, you really want to watch this one before you get started. The the big thing is um, you do not need a lot of water. This the the pellets you have um, that's really concentrated. So again, like I let I put the water color with a water color on here. It's set under a heat lamp for you know. Uh, several days, uh, all the water evaporated. So just add a little bit of water on your brush, put it into the color, and then move it right into the middle of the pellet. And then that's how you don't need to go back and forth because uh, uh, um, you'll see in the video. If you watch the video, it'll be good to go. Um, so just uh, watch the video and I kind of like watch you through like how to get started on that. So um, I painted like a couple different, uh, like the first like four colors on here. And then I did a time-lapse video for the second video uh, which I kind of want to talk about real quick here. So watch the first video, but I want to show here in the second video that I'm working across the color wheel. So I got yellow orange and the opposite side of yellow orange is blue violet. And then I'm going to go with blue and the opposite side of blue is orange. And, um, um, so I'm working my way across the color wheel because, um, if you look at the opposite color on the color wheel, uh, it is uh, um, called the complementary color. I'll go to the next thing here. 
So the opposite color on the color wheel is the complementary color. So the complementary color for blue is orange, for red is green, for yellow it's violet. So if you like take some yellow and put like the yellow down the middle of your palette, and then put it on there, then put your brush in the water for pet in water, put it back in the yellow, it gets a little lighter. Put it in the water, put it back in there, it gets a little lighter. And that's how you like light things up. But now if you want to make it darker, um, then you have just a teeny bit of purple and it gets to be a darker yellow, and just a teeny bit of purple again, and it gets to be a really dark purple. Um, start dark yellow. And same thing with like uh, purple. If you add just a little bit of yellow to it, it gets a darker purple, and a little bit more yellow, and it gets darker purple. So same with red. Um, I want to make, uh, I have red here, and so I put the red down, add a little bit of water to it, add a little more water to it, it gets lighter and lighter. Then I want to make it a little bit darker, so I took a little bit of green, mix it with that red, and it got to be a darker red. And then a little bit more uh, green, and it got to be a um, darker red. Now, the reason why we're doing this is um, because if you mix, if you instead of using like white or black, so if, uh, if like think of like white and black, you mix the two together, you get gray. So if uh, um, it, if gray is a really dull color, so the more white and black you mix in things, it dulls the color up. It loses its vibrance. It's not as vibrant. Um, so you could use black and it would darken the color up, but it would also dull it up. It would look more grayish. It wouldn't be as vibrant uh, and as uh, stand out as much. So if you want to darken a color, but you don't want to dull a color, you just mix the opposite color on the color wheel. And this doesn't. This isn't just for painting. This is for like anything. If you got colored pencils, you got uh, charcoal, you got uh, you know um, you know pastels, like anything. Just if you mix the opposite color on the color wheel, uh, it darkens it and then keeps it vibrant. Anyways, uh, I think I've like talked for quite a bit right now. Um, so um, I'm gonna like uh, stop right there. I'll open up the questions and then uh, I'm gonna let you guys kind of get started here. I'm gonna stop sharing that. One, 